Okay. Hallelujah. Here is God greeting you all there in Hong Kong and the rest of Asia. Whoever is joining us uh, on this live streaming or uh, on this Saturday morning, it would be Saturday morning for you there in Asia. I would like to greet all of you. Uh, happy anniversary to Hong Kong and happy women's conference to all. I'm not going to say Kong Hei Pat Soi. But uh, uh, let the Lord God reveal himself to you and touch your hearts as we do this conference uh, today. And I hope that you will be blessed by the end of the day as uh, you listen to these messages. It took me some time to have this uh, recorded, but... Uh, uh, I'm going to do a combination of testimony and of uh, uh, messages, I mean, scriptures that the Lord has given me and of what I have heard from others too. It is uh, important that we also uh, acknowledge the Lord as we, I don't think it is bad that we also borrow vessels. It's like borrowing vessels from others and then the Lord gives the anointing. Okay, so let us pray. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for this uh, um, women's conference that is ongoing in Asia. I pray, O oh Lord, that uh, you would just be the one to bless your word and bless this very message that uh, people would be blessed. My sisters in the East, O oh God, would uh, get to hear your voice and that we invoke your Holy Spirit to do his work in the heart of each one in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. The title that was assigned to me is how to become a godly woman. So it is more on becoming a godly woman. And I would also emphasize that there is a blessing in being a godly woman. And also the importance of uh, the influence or impact that a godly woman can have on the people around her, especially her family. Now, most of you that are working there in Hong Kong, in Macau, in China, and in the rest of Asia, many of you are women, of course, in, with the exception of uh, the exemption of Taiwan and Hong Kong, I mean, uh, Japan and Korea, marami rin mga brothers. But uh, it would be good for the brothers to also listen to this so that it would not just be a men's conference that they would have later on. Maybe the pastors of uh, Japan and Korea can talk so that you can have a men's conference even for Asia. Um, I know that uh, there's a message being reserved for this afternoon uh, that you would get to hear from Mother Adeline. And I don't know what she would be covering on. It may even be uh, a a series of messages that have been documented in the past but it's always a blessing to hear from our mother now uh, i'd like to concentrate on just this being a godly woman and it covers being a wife being a mother and being a, a married woman or a single woman so this covers uh, generally okay uh a message that is for everyone that is considered a woman now if you're a woman this message is for you you consider yourself a woman I know that the Lord has created man and woman and uh, uh, he hasn't created the in-betweens it is because of the work of the devil that there are in-betweens now and there is an exchange of going from one gender to another but i know that you know where you are and what you are and who you are uh, because our god is a holy god we are called to live holy lives godly lives and so we'd like to i'd like to start with the uh, the definition of what godly means or maybe pointing out the synonyms Ano ba ang godly? Sa Tagalog ay makadiyos. In English, it means devout. 
it can possibly be religious or spiritual, pious, holy, righteous, or uh, living a life that is conforming to the laws, the biblical principles that have been set by God, or aligning your life to the will of God and living out your faith in your daily life, in your daily daily activities okay so this encompasses your character and your attitude i our character and our attitude i am not uh, exempting myself okay so as i preach this i also preach to myself this message is for everyone because we have mentioned about the will of god so this is god's will whatever you hear today is actually God's will for both the young and the old, for the married, for the single. When I say single, that covers those that are widowed, those that once have been married, you are divorced or separated, and now you're single, or for those who have been single all their lives, just like me. Okay? And I honestly believe that to be able to live a godly life, as a woman, to be a godly woman, considered to be a godly woman, it starts with our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It starts with uh, God's plan of salvation. You know, when uh, we give our lives to Jesus, open our hearts and let him take full control, then we have a true encounter of, uh, of Jesus, his presence in our lives. This cannot happen. Wala pong pwedeng maging makadiyos. Nobody can have a true change of heart or transformation of heart unless we truly have an encounter with the Lord and surrender our lives to His full control and that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we would have an inner change because the change has got to start from inside and then manifest in the outside. Okay, uh, marami po akong testimony, I don't know, mahirap pong sabihin na tayo godly woman uh, based on what others see and I believe in my heart that I have been born again, that I have been transformed and that it is a challenge to actually really live up to the expectation of God and truly be a godly woman. Um, this is my personal testimony. I have come to this point where I am uh, because I believe the Lord has planted people in my life to give a strong impact and a strong influence. I would like to acknowledge, will the Lord bless her soul, my grandmothers, but especially my grandmother Cesaria, uh, the bishop's mother. Why? Because when I was young and still a student, uh, she would be preaching to me. I would go to her place and visit, sometimes with a friend or two, and she would preach to me just as she preaches to any pastor that enters her home. And she would have plastered on her wall, you know, the, the uh, dispensations, the seven dispensations uh, of the history, biblical dispensations. And she would... Uh, warn me and give good advice but of course besides my lola cesaria or duduli after she i am named after her is my mother of course mother adeline and we know how as many of you have known her for many years and she uh, has had great impact if not the greatest she's my number one intercessor and prayer partner Besides her in the family, I am talking of people who have impacted me and caused me especially to grow spiritually. Uh, is my Auntie Grail, Pastor Grail Yamashita Marcelo, the wife of Pastor Bill Marcelo. Uh, they haven't had children. She was single uh, for a great part of her life. She was 40 plus when she got married, just like my other aunties on my father's side and uh, uh, she has been a very good uh, teacher 
when we were children, me, myself, and my cousins together, and my siblings, she would gather together and she would teach us uh, Sunday school songs. She would teach us stories too. Um, and so uh, the kind of discipline that uh, I received from mom and from Auntie Grail, uh, well, of course, there's the bishop and my grandfather, Lolo Milisho. And uh, of course, my grandmother, even on the mother's side, Lola Isabel, the simplicity of her life, the kinagagat na, her, her industriousness or hardworking, uh, you know, she knew how to make use of her hands. And she was also uh, a farm lady. She, they were farmers. And I remember when I would go on trips with her, she had a store in Sagada and she would, uh, I would go with her traveling from Sagada to Baguio and back and forth. And I would see, and she's been selling peanut butter until she was past 80, 80, she was 80 plus already. Besides them, on the spiritual side in the ministry, the late Pastor Paula, the late Sister Gwen Shaw, Paula Trinidad Mayos, of course, in Hong Kong, and Sister Gwen Shaw, and of course, a number of my elementary, high school, and college teachers. And I believe some of you, when the moment you would think, who has had great impact or influence in your personal lives? Um, you would recall and you would start to thank God. Some of them have gone ahead. Some of them are still alive. And I thank God for how he has used them and um, confirmed how scripture uh, speaks to us now. Now, we'll go to the scriptures. How to become a godly woman. And it would cover also the impact and the influence that as a godly woman, what kind of impact and influence you have on the family or on other people. And also the blessings. How, what kind of blessings do we get from being that? Now, I'd like to take you to Titus. The letter of Paul to his... Uh, other spiritual son Titus, whom he was, who he was uh, training uh, as a pastor. This are pastoral. This is a pastoral letter together with his letters to Timothy. Okay, and um, this is a letter encouraging the younger, the, the older women and the younger women to do something. Now look, I shall read and allow me to read. Uh, there's going to be a lot. I mean, a lot of scriptures in between. So I hope you have your notebooks and your pens ready. He said in Titus chapter 2, let's start with verse 1. You, however, must teach what is appropriate to sound doctrine. So he is asking Titus to teach what is appropriate to sound doctrine. He says, teach the older men to be temperate, without uh, worthy of respect, self-controlled and sound in faith, in love, and in endurance. Likewise, now in verse 3, take note of this. Likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. Okay, uh, we will concentrate on that first and then continue on with the rest. Teach the older women to be reverent in the way they live, not to be slanderers or addicted to much wine, but to teach what is good. Now take note of this. Uh, older women. <laughs> older women. First, do we have a righteous mindset? When I say older women, let's say uh, 50s and above. Okay, half, At least you've reached half a century. Kasi meron pa yung mga 40s na, you know, they're still desiring to get married. I would consider that. Or if, even if you were widowed, you're still quite young. All right. When it comes to being reverent in the way they live, this refers to having a, a righteous mindset and behavior 
or attitude, mindset, refers to behavior, it refers to attitude in the way we dress, in the way we act, in the way we walk, in the way we live our lives every day, in the way we uh, carry ourselves and our affairs. Okay, in general, it is referring to attitude. So, naka-emphasize po dito yung inner character or behavior or attitude that that is manifested later on in an our outward uh, lifestyle. Kaya nga sabi ko, it is important that to be godly woman, you have to have a relationship with God and acknowledge God in your life and acknowledge that you get guidance and wisdom from Him. Okay? Next is not to be slanderers. So besides having a righteous, holy mindset is to have a righteous mouth because words, the words that we utter have great impact. In fact, just like James says, uh, there is our, our mouth can either speak life or death. And malaki po ang impact. We can either speak blessing or curse. And it says there, to have a righteous mouth, we must not be involved with malicious talk. Or to be gossipers, you know, malicious gossip. We don't even listen to gossip and then slander, pass it on or slander somebody. There's a difference between gossip and slander. Yung gossip ay walang katotohanan. Usually, there may be a grain of truth, but then uh, talking about other people, talking about stuff that is nonsense, it does not even help. And it can confuse uh, people, okay? Slander is with the intention, with the intention of really destroying the reputation of somebody. Kaya mag-ingat po tayo, we are not supposed to involve ourselves in gossip or to pass it on or to spread bad report, okay? Um, it is known generally that for the men, they tend to be abusive physically, maybe. But for the women, come on. We tend to be abusive verbally. Kaya ihinto po less, word, less words if we need to zip our mouths. Eh, wag masyadong blah, 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 blah. Na not to be too, you know. Uh, yes, we have the tendency to be emotional because we are deeply, deeply feeling people or creatures or creation of God pero wag po tayong maging masyadong uh, you know uh, talkative or masyadong uh, I, I'm even forgetting my vocabulary but you know what I mean not to be abusive verbally be careful with the way we treat our children, we talk to our children, the way we talk to your spouse, kayong mga may asawa. All right? And then, the, the third part here is, it says, not to be addicted to much wine. Uh, is it just only wine that uh, women are addicted to? We're addicted, we tend to be addicted to a lot of things. Ah, mga women. Not to be addicted to much wine. So there is a warning against addiction. Why? When we are addicted to anything, to something, uh, first it can control us and then it will consume us. Yun po ang sinabi ng isang preacher. No? And this addiction does not only refer to yung mga stuff uh, like wine or drugs or smoking or sex. Mm, sayan Or or uh, uh, gambling, or food, kain, or you know, kung saan ka na-addicted, na or if you're addicted to uh, soft drinks, not just hard drinks or liquor, if you're addicted to shopping, some people, uh, hindi kompleto ang kanilang week, hindi kompleto ang, ang isang... Uh, week, you know, one week or one day if you don't go shopping and dahil pandemic, napashopping kayo online. So, addicted din kayo sa pangungutang. Alright? 
So be very careful about utang-utang. Be careful about all this. If you're addicted to Facebook or selfie-selfie, kaya nga sabi ko, masyadong um, uh, you love yourself too much and that's idolatry. Okay? So be very careful and it can be uh, destructive. So then, ang sinabi ko dyan, we need to teach the older women. Come on, older women, nakagaya ko. 50 and above. 60, 70. No, tama na. Uh, never mind um, uh, finding love in the internet. Okay? Tama na. Concentrate na natin sa paglilingkod sa Panginoon. And so that when we are able to teach what is good and what is true and what is beautiful, what is godly, maaakay po natin yung mga ibang kababaihan. We will be able to impact, we will be able to encourage the younger children, younger women, even the youth. No? It is important that we acknowledge and we need the help of God. We spend more time now with the Lord and in reading and meditating and in teaching, in passing on the word and in living out the word of God and in prayer, naku yung prayer, lalo na yung prayer. Okay, interceding for members of the family. Come on, we need to shed tears. Kung sabihin mo na naubos na ang iyong, ang mga, uh, na ibus tilwam, kung naubos na ang iyong luha sa kaiiyak noon at uh, pagod na pagod ka na or uh, you're already tired, you know, we get our strength from the Lord. Do not grow weary in doing what is good. And part of doing what is good is praying, praying for the family, being an intercessor. All right? Now, let's go to verse 4. So that's it for the older women. Remember, we need to be righteous in our mindset, in the use of our mouth, in our uh, righteous choice pala yung pangatlo. Okay? So we have a choice to continue to be addicted or to stop it, change our bad habits into good uh, habits. All right? And uh, live a righteous lifestyle. Now, ang sabi po dyan sa verse 4 hanggang verse 5, sabi dyan, then they can urge the younger women to love their husbands and children to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind, and to be subject to their husbands, so that no one will malign the word of God. Hallelujah! Uh, two verses only, pero alam nyo, pregnant with meaning, marami pong message dyan. No? And we are told, okay, so that we can train up, we can uh, help lead the younger women into doing what is Good, encourage the younger women. Now, if you're younger than 50, <laughs> but this is for all of us actually, kaya nga sabi ko, this is God's will for the young, for the old, for the married, for the single, for the widowed, for the divorced and separated. Uh, I believe you fall under one of those categories. And if you're a woman, this message is for you. So, ano tong seven lessons for godly women in this portion verse 4 and verse 5 now listen number one is for you who are married to love your husband um, as a supporting verse in proverbs chapter 31 okay i believe that everybody knows this you're aware that proverbs 31 um in proverbs 31 starting from verse 10 hanggang verse 31, is the description of the wife of noble character. Kaya, noble is another, another word for godly. It is a characteristic, it is a characteristic of a godly woman. To be considered noble, ay maraming description po dyan. Pero dun sa verse 10, alam nyo ang sinabi dyan, a wife of noble character who can find she is worth far more than rubies. So, um, when you truly love your husband, your husband will know because uh, 
he will even become more respected than some verse 23 her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat among the elders of the land you now so uh, you get to show your love you get to um, show your respect to your husband marami pong marami pong uh, uh, scriptures regarding that and you know the challenge is but i could not understand him you might be saying that we don't understand each other and we fight often uh, we don't see eye to eye on many occasions alam ko yan because of course you have been abroad for so long and it's been a sacrifice it's been very challenging to be away from your husband or from your children now we are called you married women are called to love your husband not really to understand not to understand them well that's all part of it but ask the lord to increase the love in your heart so that you will be able to forgive forgive and forget and so that you know uh, with the love of god you will learn to love him first as a soul and then when you are friends when you start to when you begin again or, or when you restart or when you get reconciled you know when you start to die to self getting married is actually dying to self and so um, your husband will start to have full confidence in you okay because he recognizes that you are a gift from the lord and that you love him by serving him by cooking for him by taking care of him by forgiving him by taking care of your children together okay it's just so sad that many of you had to leave your children back home just to be able to go abroad at kayo ang breadwinner ng pamilya but love your husband just as it says in Ephesians you know just as the church submits and loves Jesus Christ then the wife is supposed to love and submit to the husband right uh, the next uh, the next phrase says that you don't only love your husband another lesson for you to be considered a godly woman is to love your children of course what kind of mother will just bear children and then leave them in the garbage dump actually that is happening that has been happening and it's crazy it is or what kind of mother what kind of woman would just gawa kayo ng gawa you know uh, you just engage in sex and then uh, or one night stand and then you make children are you 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 do sex and then you know that there is the risk of becoming pregnant and then you decide to abort that is a great uh, that is a great great uh, abomination that's why and dami po uh, how many millions of children have been aborted and they are voiceless they could not express themselves they could not defend themselves and uh, the kind of laws that are coming out even here around the world where abortion is legal in the united states since 1970s the very uh, famous uh, case of roe versus wade where abortion was made legal and oh and daming million i don't know how many million 60 to 70 million children babies or fetuses have been aborted and now the christian groups and conservatives are now fighting and there's other states different states where they want to turn back you know the roe versus wade and they want to um, make it illegal to abort baby abortion clinics are now being closed marami po ang nagre recognize and we need godly people even in the not only godly women but godly men godly politicians to work that out so it's a blessing to have children kayo mga may anak we are told you know to take care of them to love them 
And in Psalm 127, verse uh, 3, in Psalm 127, verse 3, it says, Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from Him. So they are a gift. Okay, like arrows in the hand of a warrior are children born in one's youth. So you are blessed when your quiver is full of arrows, full of children. That's why it was a gift. It was considered a blessing in the in the olden days, you know, olden times, even in the rural areas. It was a blessing. Kayamanan daw yung mga bata pag marami kang anak. Kaya nga your parents and your grandparents had ang dami nila. Eight, ten, twelve, meron pang fourteen, meron pang, meron pa akong kilalang uh, fifteen or sixteen sila sa pamilya. But nowadays, oh, just like in China, one, two, okay, meron pang couples ngayon dito sa West na uh, they will just get married just for themselves na walang mga anak, but it is a blessing and you're supposed to love your children. We are told to teach them the truth, to make them aware and what is the truth? It's the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The best thing that you can pass on to your children is your faith, the baton of faith. And just like your message ni mother, I think you'll be listening to it. She would be quoting from the Old Testament. It is important that you pass on the word, the practice of reading the word, of praying, because yan po ang kanyang ipinasa sa amin. All right? When we were children, she would maintain a family devotion. She would gather us. She would cause us to pray one by one. And we would pray. We would even sing, Into my heart, into my heart, Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay, Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Just teach them simple prayer of coming into my heart, inviting Jesus into their lives. And then even as we grow old, even if one day your children would go astray, but as you grow old, you would remember the times when your mom would be praying for you or would give good advice. And sometimes it's too late because we commit a mistake. We commit a mistake, we fall into sin, but then there's that still small voice, the Holy Spirit would cause us to remember and recall how our mother or grandmother or aunt or somebody uh, might have given good advice to you. Okay? Third, it says to be self-controlled. Wow, it's a lesson. How to be self-controlled? Sabi po sa 1 Peter. Okay, sa 1 Peter chapter 5. Verse 8, sabi po dyan, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. See, he tells us to be self-controlled, to be alert, to be sober-minded, not drunk. <laughs> not drunk, uh, because the devil is always there. Mabuti na lang, the one above me, this picture is, of the lion of the tribe of Judah. But the devil is only like a lion. He's roaring, but just like a barking dog, wala namang no ibubuga. All right? So, um, but he's very cunning and he is deceiving. The devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy your faith. He wants to pull you down with him to hell. But ang sinasabi po nitong scripture is that we must be sensible we live sensibly that we of course kung wala kang dios panginoong dios sa buhay mo edi eh wala kang takot sa dios uh, we need to really have that fear of the lord so that we can control ourselves in the way we we carry ourselves and we handle ourselves pang apat po is to be pure to be pure wow that means to be modest, to be clean in our hearts and in our minds, in our words, in our action. Ay marami pong masasabi ni Paul at ni Peter dito. So if you open with me your Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 2, where he gives instructions regarding worship. So he's saying not only the men 
to, I want men in verse 8, I want men everywhere to pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or disputing. I believe he's not only talking to the men, but in general, all the people, so that we will be able to lift up holy hands. We need to pray and we need to ask the Lord to forgive us and to wash us clean. And then he says, because it's about purity, women, listen to this. I also want the women, verse 9, to dress modestly with decency and propriety, adorning themselves not with elaborate hairstyles or gold or pearls or expensive clothing or clothes, but with good deeds appropriate for women who profess to worship God. Oops. Ay, nako. You know, the bishop says, I am thankful for uh, his sweetheart and his darling mother Adeline because when you look at her, and I that has been a big influence on the way that women of free believers dress up because she's very simple in the way she cl she clothes herself, she carries herself. Uh, she's a woman of few words. It's not she's not a pulpit person and when it comes to dressing up oh because she's used to office work she's always had her blouse with her skirt and no mini mini skirt and we have this we have this uh, we have set this standard and this policy that for anyone especially those that are being used in front that are being used in the worship team that are you know being used uh, in leadership I importante po. Tsaka when you go to church, dress your best for the Lord. And when it says best, you don't have to be like a model. You don't go exposing the, the parts of your body that are not supposed to be exposed. Okay? Uh, when it comes to skirts length, uh, it should be below the knee, at knee or knee level or below the knee. Ang problema sa knee level, lalo na pag pencil cut, titis. Ah, when you sit down, tapos mahilig pang mag-cross leg ang, ang tao, not very good. Kitang kita pa rin, diretso. So, if we expect the tambourine dancers to be able to dress up with loose flowing um, satin clothes, okay, how much more for people that are standing at the pulpit or even on front to lead worship? Alright, so it's not only talking about modesty in the way we dress in the way we decorate ourselves and it comes to makeup and jewelry those are not important no problem with light makeup or with just um, lip balm lip shiner or just a little blush on or powder your face so that hindi ka hindi nakikita yung uh, pawis you know but uh, to put on to paint your face very heavily you will ask any gentleman. They will actually prefer simplicity because simplicity is beauty. You know, simple is good. It's beautiful. Amen. So I would suggest uh, sell your, you go and sell your jewelry. Oh, just a simple ring if you have uh, family heirlooms that you can pass on to your children, okay? But don't waste your money on even wanting more gold, more silver, more jewelry. Uh, you won't be able to take those to heaven. Nor will you even be able to take them to hell. All right. Use them, change them, or you know, turn it to something that you can pass on to your children or bayaran uh, ninyo ang mga utang ninyo. Okay? So, it's in the way... It affects, you know, our mindset affects the way our beliefs, our faith affects the way that we we dress up, the, that we act, the way that we think, the way that we look. And, and Paul kept emphasizing, even Jesus emphasized that we are in the world, but we are not of the world. So you don't have to be like people in the world for you to be accepted. Okay. You don't have to be like people in the world so that you can be accepted. Ang mahirap dyan kasi is mayroong peer pressure. You want to be accepted, but you've got to be different. You have to show that you are different. Ikaw na Christiano. Christian, godly woman. You've got to be different. Okay. What about Peter? So it was not only Paul 
But even Peter talked about this thing and they agree so much. In 1 Peter chapter 3, he also talked just like Paul about relationship in the family, you know, between husband and wife. But he says in verse uh, 3 to 4, Sabi niya dyan, your beauty should not come from outward adornments such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. Hallelujah. You see, your beauty is from inside. It's the inner beauty that matters. Yung character po natin, yung attitude po natin. Kahit pa napakaganda, ditatak, signature clothes, signature shoes, and signature bag. You go to the best salon in town. Uh, you know, you're dressed up <coughs> like you are a celebrity. But then, pangit naman ang ugali. Chismosa naman. Imot pa'y ay nako. Um, hindi po maganda. Alright? Um, next, we go back to Titus. I'm sorry. Kumati na naman. Uh, sabi po, besides uh, being self-controlled and pure, to also be busy at home. Not busy talking on the phone, but busy taking care of your home and when i say home it's about the people taking care of chores also i am not referring to the building or you know a house is not a home but when it becomes a home when you've got people loving each other and so in proverbs 31 again uh, you would uh, when we go back to proverbs 31 to that woman she the, the noble, uh, a woman of noble character, she knows how to make use of her hands. Um, well, I'm not very good in cooking. I'm not very good in the kitchen, but I can, kaya tulagan me. Sinasabi ko kay Pastora Julie, ikaw magaling mag-cook. Ako magaling <coughs> mag-drive, mag-bit-bit. Tulungan na lang kita. Give me instruction. I will, ako yung taga-tagtad, taga-prepare ng mga ano, but ikaw ang haharap sa, sa stove. Okay? So, uh, the kind of woman that is described here in, in um, Proverbs chapter 31 knows how to, knows how to knit, knows how to sew, knows how to cook, knows how to do business, knows how to, uh, you know, negotiate and how to bargain. Uh, she's very hospitable. She knows how to work late into the night or wake up early in the morning to make money. But of course, many of you cannot even do that for your own families because you're abroad working, taking care of uh, popo, taking care of elderly or taking care of the children of another family, of a Chinese family, of an Indian family, of, uh, I don't know, Buddhist, Muslim um you know or you're working in the factory i don't know what you're doing abroad but then i know that ang calling ng most filipinos is to be able to serve at natuto po tayo he who does not make use of his hands will be hungry will go hungry hindi pwedeng you know tamad tamad ang ang uh, lalo na ang kristiyano na anak ng Diyos. So, when you're a Christian, you have to learn to make use of your hands and lalo na pag ikaw ay godly woman, anak ng Diyos. So, you get up early, you even go back, uh, go go to bed late because you have to see to it that your children are all well taken care of, well fed, well clothed, etc. So, ganun po, kaya nga sabi dyan, in verse 27, 28, she watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. You see, money does not just come through the door or just falls from the sky without you sacrificing. Her children arise and call her blessed and her husband also and he praises her. See? So, uh, marunong ang noble woman, ang godly woman, knows how to make use of her hands 
she keeps busy at home and uh, you are able to manage the family well or the household well. Okay? Ikaw ay ilaw ng tahanan. Another thing is, besides being busy at home, to be kind. Wow! To be kind and compassionate. Alright? Sinabi po sa Ephesians chapter 4 verse 32. Okay, let's go to the epistle of Ephesians or the letter of Ephesians, of Paul to the Ephesians. Chapter 4 verse 32. Sinabi po dyan, <clears throat> Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. See? Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, of course, love, joy, peace, patience. These are the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And we look to taking care, helping meet the needs of others, and you become a blessing to others. And in turn, ikaw mabibless rin, ibibless rin ng Panginoon. You see? So, you open up your home, you become hospitable, uh, offer whatever you can. So, women have the tendency, when you're a godly woman, your heart is soft. Your heart is soft. So, si mother, many pastors and workers run to mother for comfort, for prayer, you know? When they get rebuked by the father, <laughs> we know how strict and how hard a man our bishop is sometimes. But oh, he has mellowed so much through the years. Nag-mellow po siya. Pero yung mga iba, pag uh, coming from the bishop, oh, takbo sila kay mother. Of course, mother uh, would offer a word of prayer, a word of advice. But uh, she's she's all heart. The bishop naman is all Wisdom. <laughs> I mean, he's like God. He's also a disciplinarian. But our mother, don't get it, got, don't get me wrong. Mother is also a disciplinarian. No? So, yun ang maganda. Uh, when you've got father and mother both talking together, not having different standard, but sticking to the standard of God, then that's good. Right? Another is to be subject Oh, women, godly women, you're supposed to be subject to your husbands. So that was covered in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. It is also mentioned in Colossians. Let me take you to Colossians kasi parehas rin naman. Colossians chapter 3, verse uh, 18, ang sinabi po dyan, Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands, as is fitting in the Lord. In yung version ni Ephesians, uh, Chapter 5, verse 22, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do unto the Lord. So as is fitting. So just as the, ch the church submits to Christ, we, you women or we women submit to the husband. But it's not only to the husband. A life of submission, you know, we're told to submit to the government. We're told to submit, number one, to Jesus Christ. And then you who are married, you submit to the, your husband. But we are also told to submit to one another. So when there is sacrificial love shown by the husband, you know, when the husband really truly loves the wife and the children, he will do everything just as Christ sacrificed his life for the church, just as Christ loved the church. But this will definitely help fuel or it will definitely encourage the women or the wife to respond to show respectful submission, to respect and to submit, you know, to the husband. I know you will agree. Amen and amen. Okay? So, so first Peter rin. So it was not only Paul, but even Peter emphasized this in first Peter chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. Wives, in the same way, submit yourselves to your own husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, many of you have unbelieving husbands. If you submit and you continue to love them, no matter what kind of person they are, no matter what atrocities they have done against you, but just forgive and pray for their souls. They may be one if they see that you are submissive, that they see that you are gentle, that you are a woman of few words, that you don't fight back, that you don't quarrel, you don't answer back. 
Oh, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. They're going to see, you know, that purity and that reverence of your lives. See? So uh, I hope that this has given you encouragement. And I'd like to point out also the influence of a uh, godly woman or the impact, like the examples of, look, in Exodus chapter 2, verse 1 to 10, you would read about the story of how uh, the mother of Moses, you don't see her name in that particular scripture, but you will see it in Exodus chapter 6, verse 30, uh, of verse 20, Exodus 6, 20, you would see the names of the parents of Moses. It's Amram and Jochebed. So Jochebed is the name of the mom. And they, both the mom and the dad, belong to the tribe of Levi. And here is Moses, who was born. He was number three. You've got his older sister, uh, Miriam, and brother, Aaron. But he was born at a time when the evil Pharaoh wanted uh, ordered the killing of uh, just to control the population it was part of population control now they're gonna start killing baby boys okay just like in china <clears throat> and uh, he was born at that time and it was a wonder for how how many months it was three months if you read the scriptures for three months can you just imagine the authorities the police at that time <laughs> the soldiers or the guards didn't hear uh, the cry of Moses. When you have a newborn in the house, you know how a newborn keeps crying even in the night. But she had this idea and she was given wisdom by the Lord to make a basket, to weave a basket uh, and put him in that basket and let it float down the river. And Miriam followed it, of course, was hiding amongst the reeds uh, on the edge of the river, on the river bank. And then suddenly you've got the princess, the daughter of the king of, of Pharaoh of Egypt, uh, saw this basket and saw that the baby was there. And then immediately Miriam came out of the, uh, of the reeds, of the plants, you know, the river, river plants and offered, would you like me to... Would you like me to go look for a nanny to take care of him? Oh, yes, please. So, of course, who did we, Miriam go and uh, run to, run for? It was their own mother. And uh, the princess spoke with uh, Jochebed, not knowing that she was the biological mother of the baby, and asked her to raise him up until such time that he was weaned and uh, he was old enough maybe to walk. And to talk and then brought the boy to the princess in the palace and from then on moses grew up to be a man until he was 40 years old okay until that uh, that time when uh, he had that experience of when of course he already knew that he was hebrew <clears throat> but you look uh look at the sacrifice of a mother uh, one who feared the lord na bigyan ng Panginoon ng wisdom and then it was painful it was a painful separation but for you to raise up your child only up to a certain age and then you'll have to pass him on to somebody it's just like the feeling of Sarah you know, or but most especially of Abraham where they waited and waited and waited for 25 years she was willing to uh, let the husband go sleep with the maid, maid uh, with the woman in the the lady in waiting, Hagar. <laughs> but then uh, it was made clear to her and to Abraham that uh, Ishmael was not the son, so that God gave them Isaac. But later on, uh, Abraham got tested, and of course Sarah. The Lord asked Abraham to go and offer. Isaac on the top of Mount Moriah. We see the example of Hannah in 1 Samuel chapter 1, where she was barren compared to uh, the other woman. Just like Sarah was barren at first, 
just like Rachel was barren at first, just like Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, was barren at first. But then God intervened because Hannah kept praying and praying and crying. And here is the priest Eli even thinking that she was drunk <laughs> when she went to pray in the temple. But then she kept praying and she made a promise that if the Lord would grant her desire to have a child, she would give him back to the Lord. And she kept her promise. So after she weaned Samuel, and she then brought back, brought Samuel to the priest Eli saying, if you, you, you don't remember me, I'm that woman you thought was drunk, but I kept crying. I was crying without my voice and uh, I was pleading and asking the Lord in desperation for a baby. Now, here is the baby. I have promised I'm dedicating him to the Lord and may he live all of the days of his life in the service of the king. Okay. When you speak of impact and influence of a godly woman, oh, uh, nothing could compare to Naomi and Ruth. The impact and influence of Naomi being a godly woman. When you read the story of Ruth, just a few chapters, and here is Naomi leaving Bethlehem, the house of bread, together with the husband and the two sons. Uh, they went to Moab because there was a famine in the land of um, Israel. And when they went to Moab, uh, disaster came, where the husband and the two sons died, one after the other. But, of course, the two sons got married along the way. And uh, they married the uh, Moabite women. And <laughs> when she heard, so it was just the three women, Naomi and her two daughters-in-law left. And she heard the news that uh, the famine is about over. And she was telling her daughters-in-law, Orpa and Ruth, to go back to their families and to their gods. But uh, we see this in Ruth, the first chapter. Uh, Orpa went back, but here is Ruth, who got so influenced and was watching the life of this mother, Naomi. And she decided, and that is why Ruth chapter 1 verse 16 is often quoted. And um, it is, yeah, it's often quoted in, it's a verse that is, uh, displayed during uh, me uh, weddings when people two people who are committed to each other they would quote from this in verse 16 Ruth replied you see Ruth clung to her she couldn't say goodbye but Ruth clung to her meaning to say to cling she she didn't leave Naomi and uh, Ruth replied in verse 16 don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Verse 17, where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. See? And so, uh, yung impact or influence ni Naomi kay Ruth, it caused Ruth to come to believe in God and to follow the mother-in-law back to Jerusalem, ay back to Bethlehem. But at the same time, you would see to say if you read the, the scripture, Naomi considered herself when she went back to Bethlehem, she says, oh, I'm back. Don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara uh, because I have no one. She forgot that the Lord has given her Ruth. And she's got to acknowledge that without Ruth, what would be life after that? Uh, the Lord gave them both wisdom, of course. There was a law. There was a practice or a tradition of uh, for the widows, you know, for any widow, to look for the closest kinsman redeemer. And Boaz, a wealthy man who owned tracts and tracts of land, so far was the kinsman redeemer, just like Jesus. He is a foreshadow of Jesus. And um, Naomi, of course, was dependent on Ruth 
So it was Ruth that God provided as a means of blessing where God made use of Ruth. He controlled the circumstances and caused uh, Ruth, I mean, Boaz's eyes to be opened. And uh, of course, there was another closer relative, but uh, did not want uh, to be bothered. So the responsibility fell on Boaz to marry the widow of his cousin. Uh, and so, you know the story, you know the end of the story. Boaz married Ruth and of course was providing for Ruth and Naomi. And we know that later on, uh, Ruth became the great grandmother of King David. Mm. So, malaki po ang impact or influence ng godly woman on your own biological children or even on your in-laws just like uh, Naomi had on Ruth. And I believe that my sister's in-law, uh, Connette and Principal Connette or ex-Principal Connette and even Principal Jenny can testify, can attest to the fact that they're thankful for having um, uh, Mother Adeline as their mother-in-law. Or the impact of a godly mother and a godly grandmother on your children and on the grandchildren like Lola Lois and Mother Eunice had on the faith of Timothy. Kasi inacknowledge po ni uh, Apostle Paul Kay Timothy na nakikita po, very evident ang faith mo, which I know uh, because of your faith, uh, you learned it, you had it, it existed from, it was passed down from your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. So it was passed on to Timothy. So ito po. So whether you are called into leadership or you're gifted, uh, you know, or you consider yourself simple, unknown, or you're an ordinary member, it does not matter. We are all called to live godly lives. So just like Deborah, she had leadership role in the in the book of the Judges, and you also have Jael. She was an unknown woman, but she was a great help, and she poked a, she was able to kill uh, the enemy. Um, you know, so you know the story of Deborah and, of course, Jael. Uh, I think that's in Judges uh, chapter 4. Yes. Jael was the wife of Heber the Kenite. And she was the one that uh, killed Sisera, yung enemy po nila Deborah at ni Barak, who were the leaders of Israel. But... Anyway, there's many, many others. The role of Queen Esther at such a time as this. Maybe the Lord has put you in a position. It is Kairos time. Oh, that's another, that's another message. I spoke about Kairos time and Kronos time. Um, because we need to redeem the time. Play your role as a godly woman in the family, in your church, in the barangay, among your friends. Make use of Facebook and your social media to actually uh, lead your friends and your circle of friends, your uh, sphere of influence. We all have been given a sphere of influence to just make use of the opportune time, make use of whatever resources you have, just to be able to lead others to Jesus. And this is the message. I hope that... Uh, I was able to encourage you and to inspire you to continue serving the Lord in these end times because grabe ang wickedness. And I'd like to end. I know that I went over an hour. Uh, it's been over an hour, I think so. But I'd like to end with this letter of God to woman. If you're a woman, this letter, this love letter is for you. When I created the heavens and the earth, I spoke them into being. When I created man, I formed him and breathed life into his nostrils. But for you, woman, I fashioned you after I breathed 
I breathed the breath of life into man because your nostrils are too delicate. I allowed a deep sleep to come over him so I could patiently and perfectly fashion you. Man was put to sleep so that he could not interfere with the creativity. From one bone, I fashioned you. I chose the bone that protects man's life. From one bone, I fashioned you. Okay, take note of that. I chose the rib which protects his heart and lungs and supports him as you are meant to do. Around this one bone, I shaped you. I modeled you. I created you perfectly and beautifully. Your characteristics are as the rib, strong yet delicate and fragile. You provide protection for the most delicate organ in man, his heart. His heart is the center of his being. His lungs hold the breath of life. The rib cage will allow itself to be broken before it will allow damage to the heart. So support man as the rib cage supports the body. You were not taken from his feet to be under him, nor were you taken from his head to be above him. You were taken from his side to stand beside him and to be held close to his side. You are my beautiful little girl. Remember, this is a letter from the Father, from God the Father. You have grown to be a splendid woman of excellence, and my eyes fill when I see the virtues in your heart. Your eyes, don't change them. Yes, because you know, some women now, they try to use colored contact lens. Gusto nilang blue eyes sila. They're not satisfied with the brown eyes that the Lord has given us. Your lips, oh how lovely when they part in prayer. Your nose, so perfect in form. Oh, maybe it's not high bridge nose, pango, pero it's still perfect in the sight of God. Your hands, so gentle to touch. But I know that many of your hands are calloused because of the hard manual labor that you do for your amo or for your employer. I have caressed your face in your deepest sleep. I have held your heart close to mine. Of all that lives and breathes, you are most like me. Adam walked with me in the cool of the day, yet he was lonely. He could not see me or touch me. He could only feel me. So everything I wanted Adam to share and experience with me, I fashioned in you. My holiness, my strength, my purity, my love, my protection and support. You are special because you are an extension of me. Man represents my image, but you, woman, my emotions. So together, you represent the totality of God. So man, if you're listening, treat woman well. Love her, respect her, for she is fragile. This is what I can share to all of you godly woman, women there in Asia, in Hong Kong, in the rest of the, the countries there in Asia. And I pray that you have been blessed. Let us all together live our lives according to the will of God, not conforming to the patterns or the basic principles of this world. This world is now so, there's so much evil, there is so much uh, uh, rebellion, wickedness out there. But we thank God that the Holy Spirit is there to encourage us, um, no matter how hard, no matter how upward or uphill the the traveling is because our goal is to you know to be in heaven with the lord 
And so I encourage you, no matter what kind of persecution or abuses that you've gone through or difficulties and sufferings, just look to God. He is our strength. The Father is there. You are the daughter of the King. You are a princess. So let us pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, for every woman that has listened to this message. I thank you that your promises are real, are true, and that you are faithful unto those that remain faithful to you. You are faithful to show yourself um, and to show your glory, to show your power. I pray, O oh God, that you continue to stretch out your hand upon every woman. Up, um, Take whatever they have offered at the altar, Lord, and I pray that you be the one to bring to pass your will and the very destiny that you have decided for each one, O oh God. I thank you, Lord, for healing will begin. Let there be inner healing. Let there be uh, physical healing too, mental and emotional healing, Lord, so that they may be able to come to terms and live their lives according to your will. Thank you, Lord, for blessing this word and blessing this session. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you all.